Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Nestor, and I welcome you once again to their Friday Virus versus Versus, and I hope you're having a great time. I want to tell you a story about what happened to me about probably about 31 years ago, or no, about 30 years ago. I was a young, I was young in the Lord. I was a young pastor, and it was our first stint into the full-time ministry, ministering in the inner city in Manila, Philippines. And I was very passionate. I was very driven. I wanted to make an impact in the inner city. And so I was doing everything I can to win the souls for the kingdom of God. I was enjoying the moment. I was a young 27-year-old trying to prove myself that God has totally called me. And so, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours every day, I would be out in the streets ministering, loving, leading people to the Lord. And um, one day I was, I was in the presence of God and the Lord just kind of, um, spoke to me and uh, I came across a scripture in John chapter 12 when it says you will always have the poor among you but you will not always have me when I came across this scripture it seems like the page just can unfold it and op it opened up my spiritual eyes and my heart and I saw something which I have never seen before I did not know that this scripture would forever direct my life when it comes to the relationship of my loyalty to God and my passion for souls so in this scripture it, it the Lord just kind of said to me Nestor you will always have the poor and when he said that I saw the bigger picture of the ministry it seems like the Lord was saying to me the poor Nestor represents all the brokenness in people's lives and that was 30 years ago do you know that until now I still deal with brokenness of people Last Sunday, we buried a young pastor friend of ours. He was only 51 years old. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed, but the Lord decided to heal him on the next life. And then you go through marital, marital counseling and people call you for prayer. And then you deal with cancer, you deal with pandemic, you deal with brokenness of people by because of their unforgiveness. It's one after the other. And it always brings me back to that scripture when God said to me, you will always have the poor Nestor, but you will not always have me. In other words, God was saying to me, you will always be surrounded by the brokenness of people, whether that's an external brokenness or that's a brokenness on the inside, bitterness, anger, resentment rejection, um, abuses, whether that's physical, emotional, or, or sexual. Uh, you know, brokenness of people can be subtle and sometimes they could be glaring. And, um, and also the Lord was just kind of saying to me that, Nestor, I want you to value my presence more than your passion for souls. And that pretty much was the direction or the focus of my life since then. That the presence of God is more important than winning souls. And when, you, when I do that, I seem to be more productive, more fruitful, uh, no matter how intense the moment is when I'm dealing with people. I seem to flow with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because the Word of God says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when I, when I seek the kingdom of God as often as I can, I begin to experience a supernatural, uh, supernatural energy that flows through out, out of my heart. A, 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 a this um, this flow of patience and and uh, graciousness and being merciful to people because of the reality that when you are when the presence of God is fresh and uh, revelational in your life, uh, you know the rest shall be added unto you. And uh, other than that is this: I discovered. That in Romans 5.5, 5, it says that, And the hope does not push us, put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When I discovered this scripture in Romans 5.5, 5, that I sometimes I wonder, well, how is it that year after year, month after month, week after week, I go out there and minister to people, visit people, whether it's a hospital or a funeral or have a cup of coffee with someone and they begin to pour out the brokenness and the pain and their anger and their resentment and whatever is the challenges in their life. I seem to, I seem to be attracted to the pain and to the brokenness of people and I, you know, I just want to just be part of the process of their healing. And I, I discovered that the Word of God says that God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit 
who has been given unto us. When I knew that it was not a Nestor's love or it was not a natural love, but it was a supernatural divine love that has been poured into my heart by the presence of the Holy Spirit, that's when I discovered not only the value of the presence of God, but the love of God that has been that has been poured upon our hearts or upon my heart by the Holy Spirit. You see, when you become a child of God, you experience not only forgiveness, but this overflowing love for other people. In fact, the Word of God says, Love the Lord your heart with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And you must lo love, their, you know, love, your, uh, love others as you love yourself. And so what happens is, the love that we have to the, we, you know, in regards to the brokenness of other people, it is because God has poured upon us His love. In other words, uh, God has already uh, prepared us for the brokenness of people. In fact, the Word of God says in Romans 5, 8, For God demonstrate His love that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for our sins. Before we were saved, before we know we have eternal life, before we knew that there was a divine call, before we knew that we have a divine purpose and assignment, before we knew about the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and before we knew what it, you know what it means to be delivered, uh, justified, sanctified, and totally healed from our own brokenness and be forgiven from our sins, God's love was already there when He said He demonstrated His love for us that while we were sinners out there, Jesus Christ died for our sins. So in conclusion, I just want to encourage all of us that you will all, we will always have the poor, as Jesus Christ said, but we will not always have the very presence of God. Lay hold of the presence of God because that's what will sustain us and refresh us in the midst of this dying, broken, hopeless, and an aimless world. Because we do have the answer through Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you all people. I hope to see you this coming Sunday on our worship celebration online or in person. We have 9 o'clock service and 10.30 uh, online service as well as uh, in-person service. So check us out, jilfnj.org for our website and our Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Jesus is Lord, Fellowship, Tom's River. I love you, everyone. God bless you. Peace, shalom, God first. Bye-bye.